So because there's hardly any laws in this country to protect the, you know, protect the girls, they kind of protect them. So if the girl is over 18, she's a criminal. And I think it will make, uh, if prostitution becomes legal, it would make it very easy for men to buy girls. And nobody ever asks, is this girl trafficked? Is this girl false? Is this girl doing this totally, you know, uh, not by her own? Uh, nobody wants, no woman wants to sell her body. I mean, I know this for a fact. Yes. Now, Professor Tidball, we have about a minute left. Can you tell us about your personal endeavors? I know you have a website and uh, tell us all the things that you're doing. Me, not, I'm, I'm just doing like a drop in the bucket. I always feel like I should be doing a whole lot more. But at the university, I'm teaching a class on human rights, social justice and the media. And it's extremely popular. I have a lot of faith in the millennials. They want to be a part of the social change that they want to see. And I also have a student organization that I'm the RSO, you know, the faculty advisor for called New SAMS, which stands for Nebraska University Students Against Modern Day Slavery. And I'm also involved with, um, you know, doing some work with the state government and uh, have done some work on a task force or two, doing some research on my own. So there's quite a lot going on, but not enough. Okay, well, thank you so much, Professor Triyani Tidball. And uh, we look forward to more reports from you in the future. This is a protest, and this is a riot. If you can't tell the difference, then you are part of the problem. Infowars.com. Brain force is here. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been on this the last few months. You probably noticed I've been more crazed, more focused, less brain fog, more energy, more special reports and it's because of Rainforce. One of the worst things with most energy products is it's not sustainable, right? You're gonna crash, you're gonna feel really bad afterwards. This has a bunch of different antioxidants and compounds and polyphenols. Everybody's on these drugs to knock their brain out because the brain's so fried. We kept changing this formula over and over and over again until it became sort of a grand puzzle. For example, the L-theanine inside of it, that is activated by the different compounds in the yerba mate that we put inside of it as well. This just increases the compounds you already have. This is what you're actually designed to run on. Exactly. It's kind of like a car I'll run on one form of junkie gas, but it runs really good on what it's designed for. You will find Brain Force, Survival Shield X2, and other game-changing products at InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. Introducing Secret 12, the new InfoWars Life Vitamin B12 formulation. Most forms of vitamin B12 are highly processed and synthetic and could not be properly absorbed by the body. That's why for real results, so many are having to turn to painful B12 injections, which are known to have higher absorption rates. Now, InfoWarsLife.com is excited to announce that we can bring you our most bioactive, powerful form of B12 that has been developed with our exclusive perfected process. Secret 12 is a binary of nutramedical grade bioavailable coenzyme forms of B12, methocobalamin, the same kind used in B12 injections, and adenosylcobalamin. Secret 12 is simply taken by mouth, right on the tongue, and then swallowed. No needles, no injections. Don't take my word for it. Try it for yourself. Discover the secret. Secret 12. Secure your revolutionary Secret 12 formula right now at InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have the Austin Police Chief, Art A. Saveda, a very interesting fellow uh, here in studio with us for the balance of the hour. We're just in here turning up his audio. And the reason I like having him in studio is he'll come in studio. <laughs> um, other Austin Police Chiefs that I ran into weren't really bad people, but they were very uh, cloistered, let's say, kind of up in their high tower and we're really kind of afraid of the media. Uh, Art, uh, you have not been afraid of the media, and, and you have a very, very uh, interesting past. Uh, of course, you're a uh, Cuban immigrant to this country fleeing Fidel Castro, and so that's why you've always pointed out to me that you know you uh, love liberty and freedom. So it's good to have you here with us, but you're also a popular police chief across the country. And I've got to say, as Austin's grown, uh, normally they say police departments get worse as they get bigger because it's hard to control them. But I've really got to say it's true, and I think the, the press says it, the public say it. 
uh, that Austin is a model police department. Well, thank you. That means a lot to me, especially coming from uh, a person that has been a watchdog of government for his entire adult life. It, uh, we're definitely not perfect. We you know we have our issues, we have our challenges, but by and large, I wouldn't trade uh, these officers for, for any in the country. They're, they're phenomenal. Well, you got in some trouble. I mean, not a lot of trouble a few years ago. You said, listen, at least our police aren't shooting people in the back every day. Uh, you know, talking about other departments. And, and again, other departments, I'm not even attacking them, but compared to a lot of these other departments, Austin uh, also has really nice police on average, but they also, you know, tend to do their jobs at the same time compared to other cities I've been in. Yeah, I mean, and, and it's important. You know, the city of Austin is a, uh, it's a, it's a progressive uh, city. It's a successful city. It's a community that's very much engaged, as you know. In April of 2014, the Flint City Council voted 7-1 to one over the course of the next 21 months to change their water source from the treated water of Lake Huron and the Detroit River to the Flint River. Over the course of the next 10 months, water safety protocols concerning the addition of phosphate to ensure corrosive metal compounds within the Flint River would not harm the people of Flint, Michigan, were largely ignored. Uh, residents have reported that they found dead bodies floating in this river before, as well as GM and other companies, chem like Dow Chemical, they would dump a lot of their waste into this river at one time. So residents were just shocked to learn that this was where they were going to be getting their water supply from. And of course, we know uh, there was a lot of issues with how that water was being treated. The way EPA operates in general is that people who are causing trouble by doing their job are simply not allowed to do their job. They are silenced as Mr. Del Toro was. He was told, as Leon said, uh, by the ethics officer at EPA not to speak to anyone from Flint or about Flint. He told me that himself before he was unable to talk to me anymore. Largely ignored until local Flint, Michigan mother Leanne Walters noticed that her children were becoming very sick. My home used to be a place of comfort and safety for my family. It used to be what a home should be, a place of peace and protection from the outside world. That was taken from us, and not just from my family, but from every home and every citizen in Flint. Now my home is known as Ground Zero. The people in Flint now stand with the people in D.C. who suffered their own lead crisis a decade ago because we now know the horror of poison running through our taps and the negligence of the agencies paid to protect us. I had three tests done by the city of Flint using extra steps that tend to minimize lead in water. Those numbers were 104 parts per billion, 397 parts per billion, and 707 parts per billion. I contacted the EPA and started working with Miguel Del Toro and Jennifer Crooks at the EPA. Mr. Del Toro was very thorough and knowledgeable in assisting me. I told Mr. Del Toro I did not believe there was corrosion control in the water, provided him documentation about this fact, and he verified my findings, and he was furious. Mr. Del Toro questioned the MDEQ, and at first they lied, and then later admitted the truth. I figured out that Ms. Crooks was aiding the MDEQ with her lies, and Mr. Del Toro was the only one willing to address the problem. I requested a copy of Mr. Del Toro's report, and I made it public because people had a right to know. In a meeting I had with MDEQ, Leanne Schechter Smith bragged to me about how Mr. Del Toro had been handled, that his report was flawed, and that there would be no final report. This was the ultimate betrayal for the citizens. Susan Hedman cared more about policy than the welfare of an entire community while punishing and silencing the one person that was willing to help us. The EPA's LCR national report from 2006 states that the lack of system response for lead exceedance is especially true to inform the public. It is done less than one third of the time. From my research, I have found that this is not a Flint problem or a rare anomaly, this is a national problem. Only 10 states test accurately and according to the LCR. 21 states do not reveal their sampling instructions, and 19 states have testing similar to loopholes to the Michigan ones. You should know what happened, and it should move from being a question to actually document it, because how can you discipline someone or hold them accountable if you do not have clear information a failure of their job. And we do have clear standards, we have clear accountabilities, we have a clear path forward. We are working 
in conjunction with both the city, the state, and the federal government to resolve this so it does not happen again. What's the cost of uh, treating the water with the appropriate amount of phosphates? When the switch was made, there was actually no phosphate added at all. There was no corrosion control. Uh, federal law was not followed. No phosphates at, at all? Is Nothing the water added. now safe to drink? We cannot guarantee at this point in time the water is safe to drink. When did EPA Administrator McCarthy first visit Flint about this crisis? I believe that yesterday was Administrator McCarthy's first visit to Flint. It wasn't until yesterday that she's visited for the first time. Hmm. So the day before this hearing. So Administ Administrator McCarthy knew about this crisis for eight months, but didn't visit Flint till the day before a congressional hearing. Their response, uh, would you conclude, is, is because of a lack of clarity in the federal regulations or lack of enforcement or both? In a written letter I wrote to EPA Office of Water, I said point blank that the only thing I can conclude is that they don't care about children lead poison from drinking water. This fumbling and secretive response to the crisis by Michigan's Department of Environmental Quality, the EPA, the governor of Michigan, and ultimately the neglect of the federal government and the president of the United States resulted in the severely high level of lead poisoning of 6,000 to 12,000 children and may have caused an outbreak of Legionnaire's disease, killing 10. All roads that lead to the debacle in Flint, Michigan, dead end at the doorstep of Michigan's criminal and pitiful Department of Environmental Quality. But there were many bureaucratic back alleys along the way. Michigan Governor Rick Snyder told Time Magazine on January 14th that as soon as I became aware of the elevated lead levels in blood, we took action. That was on January 5th, 2016, many months after water testing revealed that Flint's water was unsafe to drink, that Governor Snyder finally declared a state of emergency. Federal bureaucracy, state agencies, and local officials are willfully damaging and in some cases killing American citizens due to their negligence and refusal and ability to face up to their crimes. In a true republic, the current EPA overseeing the poisoning of Flint, Michigan citizens and their children, overseeing a current toxic waste spill in Greensboro, Georgia, and responsible for polluting the Animas River in Colorado would be immediately dismantled rather than disciplined like a wet dog. Are the people paying right now in Flint for water they cannot wash in and cannot use and cannot drink? Are they paying, paying water bills? And is it a part of the recovery? You, you said you want to make them whole. Is that part of it? Why are they, why would they be paying water for water that they cannot even use that is a poisoning them? Strong words on the Hill change nothing, and the majority of American people loathe the spectacle. Lead poisoning is a growing epidemic. Pennsylvania has far higher levels of lead exposure than Flint, Michigan. Of course, you won't hear filmmaker Michael Moore going after Democratic Pennsylvania Governor Tom Wolf. That would diminish the media charade waged against the Republicans. It's simple. The U.S. government is a bloated circus of incompetence, and those responsible are too big to jail. John Bound for Infowars.com. Well, that's it for our show tonight. I'm Jakari Jackson from the Infowars Command Center, and we'll see you again tomorrow. Knockout is back. If you want a product that has 10 known ingredients that naturally get your body to relax, your brain to relax, so you get deep, restful sleep, knockout's it. InfoWarsLife.com. L-theanine, hops flower extract, lemon balm extract, valerian root extract, chamomile flower extract, L-tryptophan extract, melatonin, and more. All organic, all the natural sources. It's the same price as leading brands of melatonin that are three milligrams a piece, it has three milligram, the standard recommended dose for an adult, and it just synergistically puts everything in there. Infowarslife.com. That's Infowarslife.com or call 888 253 3139.
You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. And your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.